Hello, KM6LYW radio viewers. Um, we're going to talk about some nuts and bolts today. Um, if you're an amateur radio enthusiast or if you're a network person, a network operator, network administrator, um, you might like this video. If you're one or the other, um, I think you'll like this as well. I know a lot of amateur radios out there, especially HTs, will say they have APRSD packet radio built in. Um, a lot of people don't know what that means. Actually, it means advanced packet reporting system. Um, it's just a data format. It's a way to encapsulate data, send it over some physical transport layer. In our case, it's uh, electromagnetic radiation. And then decode it on the other end and reconstruct that data, and, and so it's something useful. Um, AX.25 has been around for a lot of years, and AX.25 is the networking protocol that's kind of, uh, that was used to implement APRSD. So think of APRS as uh, kind of a subset of AX.25. Um, AX.25 is pretty old and in this channel we're trying to reimagine um, older technologies and bring them up to date into the future. Um, some guys that are a lot smarter than I am have figured out how to actually improve AX.25 without breaking it. Very hard to do, right? Um, so what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you as an amateur radio operator, especially if you're operating digital modes and doing packet radio? You know, if you see my other channels are actually bouncing these uh, APRS packets off the International Space Station or sending SMSs or text messages and, and emails uh, using this network protocol, specifically APRS, um, as a subset of AX.25. So they've actually improved it. The one real problem with AX.25, honestly, is the... Uh, the lack of forward error correction. So if you're transmitting a packet and it's maybe a hundred milliseconds long, if there's a pop or a crackle or anything like that, um, basically the whole packet's lost. If you lose one bit, it's gone. There is a CRC check at the end of it that'll help them, that'll help the decoder determine if, you know, one of the bits is missing. Um, but ultimately, you know, it, it's gone. So if we were to add forward error correction, to AX.25, we would have kind of a new network protocol. And, and it exists, it's called FX25. So if you take AX.25 and you add forward error correction, FEC, um, come up with a new protocol uh, called FX25. And what's so cool about this is it uh, is actually retro compatible with AX.25, so it doesn't break any of your old radios and you get the benefit of forward error correction uh, for radios that do support it. Now, what's interesting is that Direwolf does in fact support FX.25. It's not enabled by default for transmit, but it is enabled for receiving. And uh, Direwolf version 1.6. So there's a great document here that we're looking at. It's actually put together um, by uh, WV2OSZ, Mr. John Direwolf himself. And of course, you know, there's, a, there's probably a lot of attributions I'm missing here, but I just wanted to talk about why you should be interested in FX.25 networking as kind of a superset of AX.25. Um, so if you if you if you're into AX.25, there's you know I can't zoom this any bigger. Um, this is what a frame looks like. So most data is packetized, right? And, and AX.25 is no exception. So AX.25 has this little flag pattern, uh, you know, kind of a number sequence that says, "Hey, I'm an AX.25 frame coming up," and radios are listening for that full time. Your HT, your FTM 400 over there, it's listening for that that flag pattern. When it hears it, it's like, "Okay, I'm going to listen for the rest of the packet." And sure enough, here comes some addresses, some control information, the actual payload itself, or the information in the packet. It. And then there's a, a frame check sequence. That's that check sum I mentioned. So, you know, it's kind of like a, a CRC check, cyclic redundancy check, an MD5 check sum. And if that check sum doesn't match the uh, the rest of the, the packet data, um, then it, the packet's completely rejected. It's gone. You know, there's a, there's a single bit error somewhere and we throw the whole thing away. And then, of course, at the very end, there's this flag pattern. This is, yeah, this is the end of the packet. Uh, stop listening. Um, so that's an AX.25 frame. It's worked for a lot of years, and on a reliable RF connection, it works really well. It's fast. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of cruft here. But if we were to add a little bit more cruft to this, we could get uh, a much better performance. Yes, the packets are a little longer. Um, so what we're doing is basically uh, AX.25 is an encapsulation protocol. Um, we're taking a regular AX.25 frame and we're putting sticking some stuff on the beginning and the end of it. So uh, we have the correlation tag at the beginning, then we have the complete AX.25 frame, and then we have some parity bits at the end. And you can decide how many parity, parity bits you want to use. Um, you can use just uh, 16 uh, check bytes, 
I should say, call them parity bytes. Um, that means you can repair up to eight bytes in the AX.25 frame. That's pretty cool, and honestly, that's what we recommend. You can add 32 or 64 bytes, and that'll that'll actually repair almost well, almost uh, like up to 32 bytes of the AX.25 frame. But the expense here is these FX.25 frames are getting really big, um, and you're kind of jamming the channel. You know, if you get too many too many check bytes, uh, parity bytes at the end of an FX.25 frame. So uh, this is really an encapsulation protocol. Um, this isn't anything new, like uh, like a lot of old satellites would send packets down, you know, with some telemetry data. And, you know, we could change that a little bit um, and, and just add stuff to the beginning and the end of the packet to give it more uh, reliability. The, the downside is it takes longer to transmit a packet. The upside is that there's a better chance of you receiving it with no errors. Um, and so Direwolf does all of this. I don't think everyone understands that. And we can look at it a little bit. Please go out and look at uh, the Direwolf GitHub site. And there's a documentation folder, and you're going to see basically what I'm showing you here. And, and there, there's real-world examples of how many more packets uh, FX.25 can can be transmitted when they're, you know, as an as the bit error rate increases on the physical layer. You know, basically how much noise there is uh, in your radio environment. Um, so that's this document. I'm not going to go through it in, in completeness, but it gives some examples of, you know, if you add more parity bytes, you, you get more packets through uh, on completely bad conditions. Um, you know, when, when conditions deteriorate, that's when FX25 really shines. If you've got a perfectly good conditions, and maybe you've got radios that are right next to each other, don't even bother with it. You know, AX.25 is going to be okay. But, uh, yeah, like it says here, you know, if there's a de degradation, um, you know, when it's, when it's bad, AX.25 is completely useless, while FX.25 continues to work. All right, so that is FX.25 in a nutshell. So what does that mean in nuts and bolts? Yeah, it's cool to read the book and see the fancy graphs, but uh, Direwolf actually has this implemented. Um, if you're running Direwolf, let me see if I can get this over here. I'm going to SS... First of all, I'm going to get my uh, DigiPy going here. Uh, DigiPy is my TNC that's connected to uh, uh, Yesu radio over here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little Raspberry Pi there. It's a DigiPy. <laughs> see my other videos for that. I think it is in TNC mode right now. That means uh, it's just listening um, and, and gating all traffic from, that it hears on the radio and uh, sending it to the internet. So the uh, TNC uh, gate is active. And actually, can see the log file, make sure we're getting. Uh, Oop, I already got a log open here. These are packets coming in over the radio. Now what we're seeing here in the log file is, you know, each one of these areas is a packet. Uh, what I'm really interested in is how many decoders actually decoded the packet. If we see a, a pipe symbol here, a decoder got it. If we see a colon here, that means there's a single bit error that on AX.25 that Direwolf was able, basically able to reverse engineer and reconstruct the packet. Um, you only need one of these decoders to work. Each one of these has a different equalization. Um, so, you know, these, these packets are coming in just fine. In fact, this one was a little weak. Um, he probably had some noise behind him. Only one of the decoders decoded him. But if you have AX.25 enabled direwolves, uh, these, these symbols are going to change from pipes and underscores and colons. They're going to change the numbers, and they're going to tell you how many bytes were actually uh, repaired using the FX.25 stuff. So I'm kind of waiting to see one here. My Digipeter up on the hill called G-Town um, is, is using FX.25 now. I was kind of waiting for it to uh, send a packet. I have an example in another window. I'm looking for numbers here where these guys are. That's not like my Digipeter to be quiet. Come on, where is one? I, yeah, I'm probably scrolling by them and you guys are yelling at me. <laughs> in any event, they're here. Oh, wait, I saw one. Oh, no, I didn't. There's a bunch of zeros. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, here's one. I found one. Digipeter G-Town, audio level 33, and you notice the decoder sequence uh, indicator is different. It's not using the pipes. So this decoder actually found, repaired six bytes. Um, actually, it was bytes positions 30, 31, 32, 36, 37, and 38. So obviously it has some static in those byte positions where this decoder had trouble. 
Um, these other decode, these other two decoders um, decoded it without having to do any uh, fancy forward error correction uh, calculations, and these and these two decoders were able to to repair one and three bytes in the AX.25 respectively. Now, for the frame to get through, only one of those decoders has to work. All the other ones are redundant. You know, we got it, and uh, this was the actual resulting packet. Um, you know, if one of these numbers wasn't zero. For example, uh, the entire frame would have been lost. We never would have seen it. Um, so you can see how delicate the AX.25 can be to noise. Now I turned on to debugging here for the FX.25, um, and this is the debugging stuff. Uh, hopefully you can read that. Um, you can see what's happening when it's trying to decode the packet. And then this is the resulting packet, which decoders in Direwolf actually decoded it. So that is FX25 in action. Um, you're seeing it on a direwolf digipeter right now that's running on the digipy. Um, kind of waiting for a new one. Not a lot of people have implemented it. Um, again, the only downside really is just the extra time to transmit those, uh, those uh, parity bytes at the end and the correlation bytes at the beginning of each frame. One thing I did notice, um, I'm trying to think of downside to this. So one thing I did notice, um, when I'm transmitting to the International Space Station, you know, you might it might start repeating my packet by while I am still transmitting my parity bytes. Now, see, most radios won't see the FX25 header and parity bytes; they'll just ignore it. They're just listening for that flag that's in the middle that starts the packet, and the and the the radio your normal radio will just hear that AX.25 payload. And decode that, and then it'll just think that the, the FX.25 encapsulation header and suffix are just noise, right? Um, so while you're transmitting, yeah, you're doing your FX.25 correlation bytes, and then your AX.25 packet begins. And let's say the International Space Station is now interested in this packet because it just heard the, the beginning of an AX.25 frame. It reads the whole frame and gets my message, and then I keep transmitting the parity bytes. What the International Space Station just assumes this is noise, right? And it actually will start repeating my packet by the t before I'm done transmitting the FX.25 packet. I hope that makes sense. So if you're doing uh, the International Space Station and it, it doesn't have uh, carrier collision detection, uh, you won't hear your own repeats. I actually had to turn off FX.25. But for every other intent and purpose, uh, FX.25 really does make a difference. It will increase the reliability and number of decodes of AX.25 packets. In fact, here's another one that just came in uh, from G-Town. Um, this one came in really well. All of these decoders didn't need FX.25. There's no errors. And then uh, this decoder, um, one byte, it was able to fix using AX.25. And of course, if there's an underscore, that just means the packet was a total loss. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Um, each decoder is, it has a different equalizer. So like the decoders out here means the, uh, the mark and space are really out of balance as far as volume levels are concerned. Um, so this means the, the low tone is, uh, or the high tone is really loud compared to the low tone. And this means on this side of the, <laughs> the, the number grouping means the low tone was, was pretty low compared to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the high tone was low volume compared to the, to the, the low frequency tone. I hope that made sense. All right, so that is FX25 in a nutshell. Let me know if you want to enable it. It's really not that hard. Um, if you're running Direwolf, uh, let's see, I'm on the DigiPy right now. I want a VI. I'm going to look at my direwolf.tnc.sh. Oops, I want to VI it. TNC.sh. All you have to do to enable FX25 networking for Direwolf is to add the dash X16 or add dash X32 or something if you really want a lot of parity bytes. Um, to get the debugging, add the uh, dash DX and you'll see all of that debugging in the logging. So this is how I fire up Direwolf on the DigiPy. Uh, this command here, and I added dash X16, uh, so FX25 will be enabled for transmit. And for and you don't have to enable anything to receive. Direwolf is just always listening for FX.25 uh, packets. Um, so anyways, that is FX25. How cool is that? Um, totally reimagining an older network protocol. That's, that's kind of the essence of this channel. Hey, before we go, I just want to thank Fuhang, <laughs> Doug, and Jeff, thank you. These are newer patrons at KM6LYW's Patreon page. That's 
patreon.com slash km6liw. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> this is really working out well. Um, and of course, you know, I, I, not to be understated, uh, we've got the a whole group of patrons here, and all of you guys are helping out, giving feedback to not only the channel, but helping you know, build a community around the DigiPi and really reinventing a lot of uh, digital modes in, in, in am amateur radio using modern technology. All right, guys, this is KM6LYW Radio, and I am clear. <laughs>